queue is for questions. Hi, I'm Beck from Be Free Emotional Fitness Training, and I support women and girls to become emotionally stronger. And I'm Vern from Move Forward Mentoring, and I specialize in male mentoring, helping boys and men find their passion, speak from their heart, and build better relationships. And together we are Rekindling Relationships. We work with couples through mentoring sessions, as well as facilitating communication and creative workshops to build deeper connections. Welcome to our podcast designed to help you strengthen and bring more fun into your partnership as well as create a more loving, healthy and strong connection. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Q is for questions and the main question that Beck's been asking me before the podcast is what are you going to talk about for Q is for questions and I wouldn't tell her and I thought I'll just wing it. (laughs) I'll do no research and I'll just wing it. So unlike you. We actually spend a lot of time questioning each other. We do, actually. We talk a lot about each other's worlds, but we don't do it in that sort of monologuing way where one of us talks about some random thing. We're actually always asking each other questions and trying to learn more about each other. True. Because we take an interest in each other's interests, and that means we take an interest in what's happening inside each other's heads, inside each other's hearts. So we're always just questioning each other, even if we're like, oh, just checking in, is everything all right with you? But then it's also like, oh, tell me about that thing you did when you were a teenager where each other are at but also yeah each other's background because you know there's a lot of life before each other isn't there and knowing more about that life and knowing more about that person's experience of it means we actually have a deeper sense of that person Mm. so what's important questions to know or is there any important questions to know i think it's actually that you just have to keep asking questions and listening to the answers rather than there's a certain questions that you should be talking about they did a psychological study uh, that explored whether intimacy between two strangers could be accelerated if they asked a set of personal questions, like 36 questions, and they were broken up into three sets, and each set's more probing than the previous one. And they said that if you do these questions, that you'll fall in love with someone. But this podcast is about rekindling relationship. For me, it's not just about the dating, because we're dating each other all the time. How are we in that dating? We're constantly questioning and asking each other and, and listening to each other. So that there's this beautiful dialogue and communication back and forth. It's everyday questions, isn't it? About mm. being present that are important. Yeah. I mean, the big questions are important too. Yeah, like the what, Where do you values. see yourself in five years? What yeah. are your values? What do you prioritise? You know, all those things, but they're kind of things you do ask when you're dating. But it's the everyday questions, isn't it? Mm. Actually, how are you doing? Yeah. Is there something wrong? What are your fears, which we've addressed in other podcasts? Mm, where are you at? Yeah. Yeah, what's going on for you in regard to this? I notice that you... Have withdrawn. Yeah, so mm. let's talk about that. Okay, so that's that's the my end of the podcast. Then. That's my well, <laughs> that's my take on questions. What what, what, were you, what do you look at? What were you thinking about? Because you had actual questions, didn't you? Well, I did look at those questions that you mentioned. Yes, I thought some were good. I don't know if it's in any guarantee that you're gonna you know fall in love with somebody more, mm. but I think it's a, a lot about being present everyday life because a lot of those questions are dating questions that you would have asked. I, I'd imagine you'd maybe, hope maybe you'd hope. Sometimes it is, again, just taking that time out to spend time together to see where each other are at. How are you feeling about everything? What are our goals together? How are you really doing? Maybe everything that we've talked about has actually been a conversation Mm. that can happen in a relationship. And it's a series of questions in that space. If it's about fears, what do you fear? It's about what do you fear and why do you fear them or why do you think? I think it's the questions that help you bond together. So like, what can I do make us feel more connected or what can I do to help you with any insecurities you might have? Or, you know, those kind of questions I think are really important to rekindle a relationship and help it stay strong. And, you know, how do you ask those questions? Well, again, you take time out together to make time to address those things and talk about them, don't they? You know, it's it's the effort you put in to really talk about the relationship, keep it strong. Yeah, get to know each other as well as find ways to connect. It comes back to our holding space again, isn't it? Mm. There's like a lot of ways that you can actually bring more trust into your relationship and asking good questions and answering them and listening to them is really key. Something that I've spoken about before about like lonely couples sitting in a restaurant 
both seeming really disconnected and not talking to each other. There's no questions happening. If you're in a space with someone, you can always get that other person talking if you ask enough questions or the right questions probably. Mm. And they're not asking questions of each other. And people get to that spot where they're on their phones and they're distracted or they're, they're stepping out and they stop asking questions of each other. And they say they don't know where the other person's at, do they? No. You mentioned about a woman who you did a healing session with that actually having trouble speaking her truth meant that they weren't asking the right questions of each other, were they? Well, they weren't feeling comfortable enough to speak their truth or their mind, were they? But that comes with to understand that something's going on for the other person and then ask a question to draw that thing out. Even if you don't like what you're going to hear, you actually have to talk about it. Yeah, there's self-growth in that. I'm going to give a challenge out there. I think on we'll your next out. date here's, night... Here's a, here's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Beck's putting out a challenge. I'm going to put out a challenge. I think on your next date night, go deep. Ask five questions that will help you go deeper in your relationship. What are those five questions? What do you fear the most about the relationship? Where do you see this relationship in five years? When did you know that you loved me? Oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, because it kind of takes it back to the beginning and why you love, you know, fell in love with each other. That's a really common thing that they do in EFT, emotionally focused therapy, where they actually ask the couple to go back to what they really loved about each other. Mm. And that allows you to step back into that space again. What are our financial goals and priorities together? Okay, so you're talking about this as a commitment. Mm. Yeah. And the fifth one? I think the fifth one could be fun. What is on your bucket list that we can do together? Keep life fun. These are five great questions. They really give you the opportunity to go deeper in the relationship and what your, your goals moving forward are and what you'd like to do, but also that fun element. And these could be a little bit tricky for some people. I think sometimes going deep is hard if you haven't had those questions beforehand, but maybe that's a goal as well. It's, I want to get to the point where I can ask these questions because these are really important questions. Yeah, absolutely. There's no depth if there's no questions. That's true. How about if you're in a relationship with someone and they never ask you any questions at all? What do you do? How do you help someone? ask you questions because you could be asking questions of other people and yes. you might not get anything I've had back. conversations like that. I have the 20 questions rule when I meet someone and if I feel like I've asked 20 questions, I give up on the conversation. And they haven't asked, you mean you've asked <laughs> yeah. 20 questions? Yeah, they haven't asked me a thing. I'm like, okay, I'm done. My time. <laughs> I actually had You can't a, have a conversation though. I had a conversation with a, a man I mentor who's in the dating scene. He wanted to know what is the best way to really learn about a woman. And I said, you have to actually ask her questions and listen to the questions so that you can ask her more. You can't just fire random questions at her. You can't just sit there and let her ask all the questions of you. You have to ask the questions and listen to it because as you listen to it, you'll understand more about this person and know whether this is a person you want to have in your life. It was funny because this seemed a little bit out of the blue for him. He's like, whoa. Asking questions, I never thought of that. I'm like, how did you never think of that? So back to the question, how do you get someone asking questions in that space? That's a good question because... <laughs> cause <laughs> well, you're it, funny. Because it doesn't come naturally to some people. And some people don't even enjoy conversation. And that's okay, that's them. But I think if you sit down and say, okay, I want to build our relationship to be stronger and deeper, I'm going to ask you some questions, but I want you to ask me them back. Do you think that will work? Because I feel like some people don't realise that part of communicating is effective listening. They might just listen for the question and shoot the question back. It's actually about saying, when I ask you a question, I want you to answer, but then I also want you to ask me back. I want us to be a dialogue. You ask a question, I answer it, and then I ask a question and you answer it, but it's it's a flow, isn't it? Yeah, and it's bringing it to their attention, just saying, and it, that's okay. Some people do struggle with communication and questions, but I think if you're patient, this is what I want to achieve from this date night. Mm. Let's make it fun. Keep it fun. It can be deep, but it can be fun too. And I'll ask it, I'll listen, and I want you to ask me a similar question or the same questions. We ask each other the same five questions, see where each other are at. Then it helps that person out. They don't have to overthink the questions because they're already there. But that's an important point that you said, just listening as well, obviously. Yeah, it seems obvious, but I don't think it is. <laughs> and 
I think sometimes it would help people if they ask a question and they learn something about that person. They somehow work to commit that to memory. So it becomes they're used to actually learning about someone. I don't think we're taught to do that. We're not taught to actually really ask good questions of each other. No, we look, I think we do it when we're dating someone and we're all excited and we want to know all about that person. But I think life gets the better of us sometimes. Then we just start talking about the kids or the everyday life things. Yep. And then Who we stop. Dogs? That's right. <laughs> We stop connecting on that deeper level. And I think it's really making that effort to not just talk about the everyday stuff and to bring some more depth into the relationship. You might think that your relationship feels stagnant and it's not as rich or as fun as it should be. And good questions can help you along the way, like those five questions that you asked. But making sure that when you sit down together, the phones are away and you're talking to each other and asking questions about that person. Make an effort. If you don't live with someone who's just like, how are you? Fine, how are you? Fine, and that's it. Like, where's the joy in that? There's no joy Did in that. Did you put the bins out? <laughs> Did, you, put <laughs> Did the bins? you feed the animals? Yeah, because that's what, that's what the it, relationship can become. It can become that very quickly. Mm. Yeah, it's just making effort and Which time. is like a business partnership, really. Mm-hmm. You're not doing anything which nurtures each other. Mm. Good a questions. good relationship takes time and effort. Yeah, and a good relationship is actually built on good questions, Mm -hmm. good discussions, good communication, good conversations. We talk about this a lot and it's key, but in those good conversations is the cue for questions. Yes, that's right. There's growth in that. So today we talked about questions and how important they are in a relationship. So please tune in next for... R is for rituals. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and follow us. And check out our website at rekindlingrelationships.com. Bye for now. See ya.